everybody. This is uh, Steve Romig. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I have been the host of Dig FM for probably going on almost two years now. I've been at Claris and FileMaker and Claris for a million years. I won't bore you with my history, although we do have a session if you want to go back into the Dig FM archives that uh, I go through all that history if you're dying to know. Uh, a couple things. First of all, uh, we talked about this during the uh, the pregame show, but probably a good idea to keep yourself on mute. But we have a WebEx tip that I just recently learned that if you want to say something during the presentation, you can hold down your space bar. You got to keep it down. And there's about a one or a two second delay, depending on how your system's set up. But it will allow you to unmute yourself, say what you need to say, whatever question that you want. And then when you release the space bar, it will automatically put yourself back into mute. Other than that, sit down, relax. We've got Jeremy Brown here from Geist Interactive, and he is going to talk about JavaScript. Now, uh, we kind of alluded to this during the pregame show also. He's got a lot of content up on Geist's website. He was also kind enough to have a fantastic on-demand session for Claris Engage. Perhaps you saw it. It's up on YouTube right now. You can check it out. Very in-depth. But uh, Without further ado, I am going to uh, mute myself and I'm going to pass it over to Jeremy. All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome. It's great to be here. I think this is my third time of uh, joining Dig FM um, as a speaker. So glad to do that. I've kind of come a long way since <laughs> those that first time. So I think it was in, I don't know, 2017 early I was there. But um, yeah, lots of fun. I enjoy talking about it and talking about JavaScript and FileMaker. I am um, uh, just happens to start. Um, yeah, I'm I'm really glad to be here. So uh, just a quick little bit about me. Um, I am um, evangelist here at Geist Interactive. I write blog posts. I do a podcast called The Context Podcast. One of the things we do there is share our FileMaker origin stories. And so if anybody hasn't shared theirs yet that would like to, um, I would love to record it and uh, put it into my podcast um, in episodes. So I haven't done episodes for a while uh, on this, so I need to get back to the origin stories. Um, there are my three dogs there on the left, uh, the right, I guess. Um, the uh, the, the brown one there with the black face is uh, recovering from ACL surgery right now um, at the vet. She has to stay overnight. That makes me sad. <laughs> so if the vet calls and says something went wrong, I'm, I'm dumping out for that. <laughs> no, I won't do that. But, uh, anyway, so uh, I go to Disney when I can. Um, I have my mask so that I can get there and enjoy the magic there. So um, we are going to talk about JavaScript in FileMaker. That's the title of this. Um, and if you've read anything in my uh, on my site about this, it's it's a very um, specific look at JavaScript from our FileMaker perspective, from our FileMaker career and the work that we do. Um, I just want to lay a couple, you know. Um, I guess, um, what do you call it, uh, arguments out there for thinking about JavaScript now. Um, I know I have, <laughs> Eric said that I've, I've been evangelizing this for a while, whether to the, you know, consternation of everybody that listens. But um, now, according to Eric, uh, I think I've overcome all the excuses for not starting it. So I'm glad for that. <laughs> for that. Um, so we'll just talk different things, uh, talk about where JavaScript is for FileMaker developers at the moment, um, talk about a learning path, some things to learn in JavaScript. We'll look at some libraries. And like I said, if if uh, if I if, if we're feeling good and, and it's not too late, I'll do some live coding just to show you a very, very specific um, example. So... Let's uh, get started. By the way, I, I do have the chat open and Eric is monitoring the chat. Feel free to ask questions there. Also, just shout things out. Um, I will try to stop and listen. Um, you know, get get loud if you need to with your hands if you need to. 
I don't mind. I don't mind interruptions because this is, you know, it's it's not me so much a lecture. It's more of a, a discussion about this, and I will I'm sure I'll ask you some questions. So, as it stands right now, in uh, September of 2020, with FileMaker 19.0, um, and you know, promised more promised releases, more frequent releases uh, coming up here. Uh, I would say that to borrow a phrase from Todd, who borrowed this phrase from the, the web world, JavaScript is now eating the FileMaker world. <laughs> um, it's it's all over our, our world now, and it's really unavoidable. I think that um, you'd have to live under a rock to not hear this word in our community either you know, from my constant badgering about it or other people, <laughs> um, it's 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 all over the world. It's definitely a long time coming. It's definitely been in the works for many years. I started my journey in JavaScript in 2016 about, and, um, but I know that people have been doing this 20 years before me. You know, I'm, I've never, I've never claimed that I'm the first or, you know, I'm bringing some awesome new technique to us. I'm just here to <laughs> reiterate what people have already talked about. So, but this is prime time for JavaScript and FileMaker. And it's my it's my belief that we don't have many more reasons to ignore it. Um, and we could do so at our peril uh, as far as, um, you know, people and uh, our clients wanting better interfaces and, and all that stuff. So it's really a good, it's really good to think about it and, and um, really understand JavaScript at this time. Um, here's some, some things. FileMaker 19, uh, back in May, released uh, three, well, it released two things and one is upcoming here, but FileMaker 19 promises us these three things. Um, the first one there on the top left is the FileMaker uh, script step that now can talk to JavaScript, to the JavaScript in a web viewer. Um, this is tremendous for us. We can write a function in the JavaScript, load it into a web viewer, and then call it from FileMaker. There's no workarounds. There's no limit. Eh, there's no real limitations. Um, there may be little tweaks here and there and peculiarities, but it's pretty straightforward and it's pretty um, useful, I guess. Uh, this, you know, Todd and others have built, I know people from Beeswax have built some ways to connect, to talk to FileMaker, to talk to JavaScript from FileMaker using a hash change or some other weird things that I never actually understood. But all that is not necessary anymore because we have this new script step. Uh, the, the bottom left there, we have a, a JavaScript function. This is a function that people at Claris wrote that gets injected into our, our code when we load it into the web viewer that allows us to tell a, a JavaScript function what uh, script, what FileMaker script to run. In this case, this example, it says window.filemaker.perform script. It can run the event script and I can pass it some variables in a form of an object. Uh, in, the, in this case, a JSON object because FileMaker can work with JSON. So this is tremendous. We don't have to use the FMP URL anymore, which can get caught in certain um, uh, platforms, certain you know uh, operating systems. And we always have <laughs> issues of, some, of sometimes of the FMP URL opening up the wrong versions of FileMaker on our machine. If you were in my JavaScript training session the first year in 2018, you experienced that with me. It was pretty awful. <laughs> so I think FileMaker 17 had come out right then. And this FMP URL kept opening up FileMaker 16. So anyway, so this right here is the solution to that. And then finally on the right there are some great um, full package add-ons that are coming to the platform. We've seen them. This one right here is one that I built for um, the product, it's a timeline that can show you know, records in a timeline using JavaScript, using uh, a web viewer. These add-ons 
bring us a lot of possibilities in what will what we can plug into our systems and what we can build if we if we choose JavaScript. So if we if we use JavaScript and if we know JavaScript. So FileMaker 19 is kind of the the uh, tipping point for us to be working with file with JavaScript. And it's just it's it's again since May more FileMaker developers are exploring JavaScript. I did a quick search in um the community about this. Uh, this is a really small picture that I blew up really big. But for the last, you know, since the, the since the the community has been going, there's been many many questions about JavaScript. But it's really we're getting a higher percentage of them. It seems like about half of the questions, roughly, um, are coming in the last couple of years. And uh, in the community, people are asking, "How do I use this? How do I, you know?" Get this JavaScript library to work and and so forth. So there's just uh, jo FileMaker developers are realizing, hey, I can take a look at this. And with the new functions, the new script step, the um, the add-ons, and just the community that par Claire's partners and other people talking about JavaScript, it's it's just there's just so much more possibilities. So I'm here to to suggest. Um, and again, this is like the one note that I've been saying for many years is that we as FileMaker developers can learn JavaScript. We don't have to um, ignore this tool anymore. Um, we've never really had to ignore it, but uh, the, the, the FileMaker platform has taken away all of the excuses to again quote Eric there. Um, so we can really spend some time on it. It is a tool in our toolbox, just like virtual lists and execute SQL and uh, insert from URL. It is a very powerful one that can provide a lot of functionality pretty quickly. So it's worth us exploring it. The problem that is has been the one of the excuses or the the reasons that people don't get into it is that you know it's it's what do you learn? What 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 should you focus on? What what should I learn? Uh, where should I learn it? And so forth. Um, so every every FileMaker developer that I've talked with that has gotten into JavaScript has has asked these questions. Um, some have attempted to to find the answer to this and just started uh, learning JavaScript through various means, um, and that's great. I kind of did that. Um, I kind of I, my route was really weird, but I got into that. I you know people here at Guys Interactive are taking courses. In fact, there's a ton of courses out there online that you could um, pick up a JavaScript course or 10 of them and walk through each video and really uh, focus on the the uh, the JavaScript. There's, you know, 20 courses here, 15 or so right now, and this is just quite a, you know, some of them. There's a ton of places to learn JavaScript, and these are great sites. These are great resources for learning the language of JavaScript. Uh, the, to me, the complete the complete language. Uh, West Boss and LinkedIn Learning will teach you every single thing that a web developer should know about JavaScript. Um, so that is that is very good. Here is a uh, a diagram that someone built that was pretty cool. I, I've studied it and kind of use it in my own learning. This is what a person suggested was a, a complete JavaScript path. So you can download this um, diagram and you can, every box that is, you know, checked with a purple is, is this person's recommendation and opinion. So you can go through this and um, learn what this person has recommended. So this is part of it. And then there's some more of it. Then there's some more of it. Then there's some more of it. So <laughs> this person is suggesting, here's how you um, learn JavaScript. This is the path to learn JavaScript. That's just, that's a problem for us FileMaker developers. We're not web developers, at least most of us didn't come from that. In my origin stories, when I talk to people, they don't start off as web developers. They start off as receptionists or they get a job that someone says, start using FileMaker. 
So the problem with using those, those online courses or with uh, following that diagram is that it's too much for us as a FileMaker developer. We, as FileMaker developers, have tasks to work on uh, each day. We have to create form views. We may have to recreate uh, views uh, of, of, of um, layouts. We may have to create layouts that, that somehow we lost uh, when, when versions didn't, when backups didn't, you know, we didn't save backups and, and we lost some work. Uh, so we have to fix, we have to fix, we have to solve our clients' problems within FileMaker already. So that, that means we're working mainly with FileMaker. We have limited brain power. I just, I'm sure this is true for you and it is true for me that at the end of the day, I'm just exhausted. I don't have any more brain power to think. And I just want to sit with my legs in the pool and just enjoy the sun and the, the, the humidity, especially here in Florida. Um, so we're, we're, we have a limited brain power and we have limited time. Um, we do have families and, and uh, you know, shows to, to binge. So it's really, um, it's really it, it, we, we just don't have a lot of time uh, outside of our normal work day. So here is what I propose as a solution as a FileMaker developer. I'm just an average FileMaker developer who worked on JavaScript, started about five years ago, and have found a path into the language from our perspective. From our, job, from our FileMaker perspective, we can take a look at the JavaScript language and learn that which we need to know right now that will help us as quick as possible um, so that we can do something with this tool very quickly and produce something amazing for our clients. So I sat down and I said, all right, what is my, how did I get into this? And I said, what am I using here uh, at Geist Interactive to write those add-ons that you saw? Um, what am I using all the time? What am I always going back to when I work with a JavaScript library. And this is the sum summary, the sum total of everything that I keep coming back to in the JavaScript language, in the web languages that help me to do what I do and produce what I produce with, with the language, with the JavaScript. There's a lot of stuff in JavaScript, but uh, this represents the I, I, I just picked out the stuff that we as FileMaker developers can learn. The purpose of this, of this mind map, is that it focuses our attention on just what we need to do something cool for our clients and to solve a problem for our clients right away or very quickly. We don't uh, need to know everything about JavaScript to um, solve a, a use case. We need to know something and some things. We don't need to know everything. What I tried to do, uh, secondly here, is I tried to tie this to what we normally do in FileMaker every single day. Um, I didn't want to present the language from the perspective of doing something completely new, but what do we do every single day? And what this path is about is it gives us the biggest return on investment. If we can learn a couple things, we will do a lot of good things in our work. Uh, if we learn about how to loop through an array of objects in JavaScript, we can do something amazing with each one of those and render them on the screen in the web view. So this is the path's purpose. This is what it looks like. Um, I'll try to get into some details here. And this is on my site. You can find this on geistinteractive.com. I have a big image of this that you can take a look at. So I mentioned use cases. This really, um, I took the entirety of JavaScript language that I took the entirety of JavaScript language. I took out what we don't need, we, we don't use very often. And then I grouped it into the five use cases or workflows. So as a FileMaker developer, this is stuff that we do every single day. We perform actions. We build interfaces so that users can 
um, do something with the with what they see on the screen, whether edit the record, create a new record, delete it, update it, whatever. So in JavaScript, we can look at that, the code, the techniques, the concepts in JavaScript that help us perform actions in a web viewer. Second thing is manipulate data. Uh, every almost every script that we write does something with the data that we're working with. If you're uh, returning, you know, um, survey responses from Gravity Forms in WordPress, you have to loop through each one of the responses and stuff them into records, and sometimes change the date from you know year 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 dash month month to what fits into your system. So we're manipulating data a lot. We're loading code or we're loading records. Uh, we're doing a, a find a found set. So we we can um, that's what we do a lot in in FileMaker. So we can find that which does this in JavaScript. Um, we can update displays. Um, you know, re-render the screen, refresh objects, hide show things, um, change the color, so forth of things based on what, uh, you know, what the user wanted to do with it. If they wanted to, you know, I don't know. So you, you know what I'm saying though, where we update the display based on user interaction or data interaction. And the last one there is retrieve data. So often we are grabbing a found set of records, we're pushing them into a chart object in FileMaker or displaying them in a list view or exporting them or saving them as a PDF. We do a lot of that stuff. And what we can do in JavaScript also is retrieve the data out of there, sending it back to FileMaker. So this is, these are the use cases there on the right that I have kind of identified and, and just fine tuned to make sure that that is correct. And then what I did is I looked at, okay, what in, in JavaScript will help me solve these. So I can perform actions there at the top. You can maybe see it's kind of small, but the, that whole um, section is devoted to studying about studying JavaScript functions, how to write functions, how to work with parameters, how to work with variables, variable scope, and so forth. And so I, they're clear on the very far right, the very last child there, I've, I've gotten the most technical and like listed the actual skill or technique or concept in JavaScript that we can take a look at. So it's my opinion and it's, it's my opinion, but it's also my experience that this stuff right here is going to be useful to us the quickest. We can certainly go in and, and spend a lot more time talking about functions and learning about how to write uh, JavaScript functions, but a basic function will do you so many good things in FileMaker uh, when, we're, when we talk about solving a use case in FileMaker. The next one there, manipulating data, it's pretty large because um, you know in FileMaker, we're working with objects, arrays, dates, numbers, and strings all the time. And we can take a look at what, how JavaScript manipulates those to um, just know that those skills and then be able to update it, uh, manipulate data that comes in. And loading data, retrieving, and updating the web viewer. Uh, I'm gonna stop here and see if anybody has any thoughts or questions on that so far. Y'all can hear me, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we hear you. All right, good. Can you hear me? Yeah. This is William in Texas. I uh, I wondered, could you could you give a just a very simple, you know, like thirty word example of something that I could do with JavaScript that I can't do with the script maker? File maker, script maker is really powerful. So. What, yeah. what is it that I, you know, why do I need to go to the trouble to learn JavaScript? Good question. I will show you that very specific, that stuff in a few minutes. Yes. Good question. All right. Oh, sorry. I have a question too. 
Um, yeah. With uh, manipulating data and, and working with JavaScript, I've found that it takes it's very time consuming for me to use that. So I tend to try to manipulate the data in FileMaker in a format, you know, with a calculation function of some sort, in a format that uh, I can just write out to the um, uh, JavaScript as a text, and then um, uh, hopefully it works. <laughs> uh -huh. um, so I'd like to hear um, what your approach is, if you recommend to um, uh, learn to manipulate the data more in the, uh, arrays in JavaScript rather than uh, writing it out as a uh, text file. Yeah, uh, I'll, uh, did someone else have something about that? Okay. Yeah, or I'll, I'll speak to that very specifically. Um, I'll do it here and then I'll show you examples um, along with you know, what, what um, William had asked. Um, number one, JavaScript is way faster than FileMaker scripting to, uh, to, to crunch some numbers to do something. Most of the time, it's not going to really matter because you're working with a small set of data, you know, 100 records maybe is not incredible. I build things for my clients that pull from, you know, Gravity Forms or other APIs all the time. And I just use FileMaker to parse through the, each of the responses and extract the information and, and push it into fields. So sure, I don't need that all the time. Where I need it the most is when I decide I wanna use a JavaScript library to render data. I wanna build a Kanban chart, a Kanban board, or a list view in FileMaker in JavaScript. The, those libraries often need the data in a different format than we can produce in, in FileMaker. And I'll, I'll, I'll show you very specifically that example. I kind of have a before and after on that. So yeah, I will show you that. Uh, but I hope that at least gives you some ideas. There's people right now who are working with the new JavaScript functionality to create ways to manipulate an array and send it back to FileMaker. JavaScript has a great functionality called filter where you can say, take this array of objects or this array of elements and only return the ones that meet a certain criteria. And it can do it blazingly fast compared to FileMaker looping through every one of those and figuring out if that element meets the criteria. So those are some good examples. Um, cool, okay. Any other thoughts or questions? Great. Okay. Well, let's keep on going. So this is the JavaScript learning path. On the right are the JavaScript pieces that we uh, can take a look at and understand. Um, you know, if you follow the manipulate data, you see the word arrays, you see the word reconfigure, and you see the word map. So there's a, um, a JavaScript function that creates a new array of objects, of elements um, that meet a certain... It, it creates, it does something to my, my original array and creates a new array. So this is all, I know this is all high level right now, I'll get into specifics. And, but that's the point of this is to say, here's what you can focus on to help you in your, um, your normal FileMaker to JavaScript work where you say, I need to render this chart or this, uh, this list view or these buttons. I'll show you a very specific example of this in a bit. Uh, yeah, I don't know, um, Taylor, that's a good under the hood kind of question. I think it's because it's, I, I have no idea. Um, uh, uh, Taylor asked, I wonder why FileMaker is so much slower than JavaScript. I don't know particularly why. All right, so along the way uh, in a learning path, it's my opinion that there, we do need to focus on some technical things. Uh, in this case, here's some HTML uh, pieces that we need to really understand. We need to study um, the DOM. We need to study um, how to <clears throat> how to load a document into the web viewer, the data URL, and, and from FileMaker and so forth. I'm not going to talk about any of this specifically tonight, but I've identified that which we will use 
quite a bit. Um, buttons, for example, we're building buttons every day in JavaScript. Um, we're building buttons every day in JavaScript in FileMaker. So we want to learn how to build them in, in, in JavaScript as well. Right. Uh, there's some there's some styling that we need to understand when it comes to making our 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 web viewer rendering look good. Um, we use CSS. FileMaker is great about hiding all that away from us, even though it's using CSS under the hood. Um, but here we got to get real with the uh, with the properties of of CSS. So um, yeah, so that's that. So these are the technical things that we need to study in order for us to be able to use JavaScript well in FileMaker. Um, yeah, so I believe this is, this is not like, I look at this, I study this every day and I say, you know what, of all the things that I've done in JavaScript, this is the stuff that I come back to. I can't think of anything that I've done recently in the past year or two that isn't on this list of things to learn. So, you know, when we all now know that, that Geist Interactive was able to create those add-ons, I actually built the Kanban board that's that's going to come in the product. I had to learn Java, some JavaScript really fast to do that. Um, here's a specific example that I'll show it in a minute, but the, the Kanban board requires the JavaScript to be the the data to be sorted a certain way in, in certain objects, um, and it's a real mess to do it in FileMaker. I actually tried to do it in FileMaker, and the script was long and it was slow and it was confusing to anybody. We should never. I shouldn't have built that script. Um, so I I stripped it out and I let JavaScript handle taking a found set of tasks and stuffing them correctly into the lanes in the correct order. Um, so I had to, you know, I had to brush up on my map skills and my for each to do that and my loop, my, my, and my filter. So this is a good guide for doing a lot of good things quickly. And I, I, again, I'm gonna show specific examples. So to get to that point where you can study this, uh, the learning path, I have put together this file called JS learning path, not called playground anymore. And it identifies those five, uh, it points out those five use cases on the right there or the left there. And then I have built some exercises for each one of those so that we can talk through it together about here's how you perform actions in JavaScript in a web viewer. And you can see those there in purple. Um, you know, manipulating data, there's a ton of, of possibilities there. One exercise is, you know, <laughs> getting the last m Monday, returning that from us, or, um, you know, finding in an array, find a particular um, element that meets a certain criteria. So this is my attempt to help people learn the skills in, in uh, from JavaScript that they can use pretty easily and, and pretty quickly in the work that they do. So I would recommend that people take a look at this. Now, this learning path that I have is not like, you don't have to use this file here. It's, you know, I put a lot of effort into it, trying to find good exercises, but you could take the, 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 the map that I've built and you could actually just go to Wes Boss's courses and, and, and take a look at what he says about each one of these. That will be pretty useful as well. Uh, very useful as well, because he's a JavaScript teacher. He knows how to teach it really well, and he will teach it to you. He won't teach it to you from the FileMaker context. Um, that's what this file does here. There's a couple of exercise, many exercises in here actually use <clears throat> data from FileMaker from a FileMaker field and actually use the, the new FileMaker functionality. So this is a good place, I think, to um, pick it up and, and take a look at how to work with JavaScript and FileMaker. Um, so that's, 
that's a, the about the learning path. And and I'm going to switch over to I'm going to do some more slides. We're going to talk more high level, and then we'll get into. I'll just I'll do some basic some coding and stuff, and and walk through some stuff with you, and try to answer Ward and and Williams' questions there. So the next thing I, I want to bring up is working with JavaScript libraries. This is the thing that I've talked about for many years, starting uh, back at, when I was at Saline Consulting. Uh, I put together that that web viewer integrations file and spoke on it at DEF CON. I, my engage session was about JavaScript libraries that solve uh, FileMaker use cases. And I just want to demonstrate that here again. Here's an example of something that would be tough to build in FileMaker. I'll get, I'll show this specific file in a minute, but these are actual questions in a FileMaker table. <clears throat> and, you know, if, if, however, I want to set this up where someone clicks on create survey and it generates the, the questions for them, I can build this using my JavaScript knowledge and a, and a library and make it, make a, a, Better is very subjective word, I think, um, without a lot of a lot a lot of weight behind it. But a more modern, I guess, interface for answering a a, a survey. Um, so this is an example of using a library that I have put together that I that I've done. Another example is the Apex charting library. That um, here here it is. I'm just showing you pictures right now, but I'll, I'll get into the de details about these. But I was able to grab the Apex library that looks like this. This is actually what the Apex JavaScript library looks like. I have no idea how any of this works. That is not what's important. The important part is that this package of text, all of these characters together, forms um, the, 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 the code that renders this. So I don't have to know anything about this. All I have to do is tell the JavaScript library, hey, here are some options that I want you to use in your library to render the code. So here is a set of options, just a picture of it for now. We'll show it in a minute. You can see the var options equals. And then underneath that is a series of options. You can see one of the options is chart.type if we follow the, uh, the FileMaker and, and a JavaScript object pattern anyway, where I say chart.type is line. So I want you to um, take this option and I want you to render a bunch of lines, one for each series of data that I give you, okay? So with just this little work, I can produce this, you know, and it takes, 20, 30 minutes to set up. Um, and, you know, this is this looks nice. You know, the, the lines are pretty silly. I kind of went to an extreme there. But I, I could, uh, oh, and here's the data. Sorry, I forgot to show the data. This data right here, you can see that one right in the middle there uh, with the date of April 30th. That is one of the, the, the data points that I have put on my graph that I want this library to render. Here I'm using the new script step file, the new file, execute FileMaker data API script step to get a found set of data and then push it into the web viewer. And I'm telling the library through various means that I want you to <clears throat> render this information, this, this data point. Now there's a lot of points there. There's type, there's sales amount, there's price and so forth. What I, what I eventually told this library to do, sorry, I'm going backwards, is I want you to render the product sales. So that um, sales amount key that's in the middle there, right in the middle of the screen, that's what I want you to render. I could have told it, I want you to render the price or the units sold, but, I, but in this case, I rendered the sales amount. Um, so that is that is how a library works generally. But what's cool is I could take that same options that I showed you a minute ago, and I could update a couple of them and say, instead of a line chart, I want you to show me a bar chart, and I want you to stack the bars. With just those two changes, I can produce a whole different chart using the same data, but with you know looking completely different. 
Um, so this, this is not above anybody's skill. And this answers the question, why would I not just use a FileMaker chart? Well, it takes, you know, a couple characters of change to update the entire chart. And of course you get some nice interactivity with this that you don't with, with a, a standard uh, FileMaker chart object. So this is working with libraries and I've, I've always advocated for FileMaker developers to spend time working with libraries as well. It's a little bit different skill than just working with JavaScript, but they are combined enough nowadays that it's important to study JavaScript, study working with libraries and incorporate the, the two of them in, in your daily work. Okay, so I'm gonna switch out here and go to FileMaker actually. Um, has, 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 you know, I've, again, I've talked about this for quite a few years. I was here two years ago. You know, you may, some of you may not have been there two years ago, but has, have, have more people in the last couple of years picked up JavaScript libraries and started to work with them? Uh, or you said you were trying to use JavaScript to do some processing of arrays. Is that a fairly new uh, endeavor for you, or have you been doing that for quite a while? Um, no, I think, well, I, I think I started messing around with it three years ago and, um, I tried to, um, to, uh, capture a process that were sequential events and visualize that. And I found an, uh, again, graph like, um, library and, um, was able to move data from, um, FileMaker into the, um, uh, grand graph, uh, but it basically did it by just writing the data into a file that then is displayed. Okay. okay. Yep. So, so it was a little straightforward and, and I assume there's more like a streaming kind of uh, option possible. Good point. There actually are ways to stream data into a web viewer using JavaScript. Um, and we kind of get into that here. That's definitely more of an advanced tool uh, method, but yeah, there are ways to do that. In fact, the add-ons that I'll show you one at least, the add-ons are that very thing. They will pick up new data that comes to the target table and or change data and so forth. So, um, and I just, I just, I want to reiterate that, yes, I, I advocate for using JavaScript. I use it when it's appropriate. I don't use it all the time. I gave a specific example of, of parsing through an API uh, response. I don't use JavaScript to do that. I could, and I'm, you know, kind of working towards that, I think, because it just would be interesting to compare the speed. The client doesn't care that it's a FileMaker script. They just want the data to be added to the records, you know, without any mistakes in a transactional way. So um, I don't care how it gets done. Um, so I'm fine with using JavaScript, but for those things that we can't do in FileMaker very well yet, um, JavaScript is the way to go. And if you choose to go through JavaScript, these are good ways that you can uh, learn. So here's this, here's the example of the, the exercise library that I have where you would uh, walk through the videos with me. I've got, you know, on my site, uh, I've got the, the videos here. Let's see. Yeah. So got this learning path page that people can walk through and download the file and then walk through the videos, um, you know, mirroring or with each of the, uh, the exercises in their own file. So that's what that's what I did. It it isolates the concept of skill. It keeps it as close to FileMaker as it can, and when appropriate and when necessary, it um, it uses you know real FileMaker data, real FileMaker scripts, and and you know and FileMaker buttons and so forth. So I'll just show you one as an example. Um, I'm going to actually click on this one, a, a, a later exercise. In this case, I've got a table here that I have just hard coded the values in a, in a JavaScript table. So I need to know a little bit about how to write a table in JavaScript or in HTML in this case. And um, so I have it here, you know, so this could be a nice static um, menu, uh, navigation for example, 
And uh, so, so here it is. So the, the task in this is to be able to click on a row and run a script, run a FileMaker script. So walking through it with me, I, ex I explain here that I'm actually using, I'm using Bootstrap to style it. That's a, a styling um, framework out there that I can work with if I were to take that line code out, I lose some nice, modern, easy styling, but I can do that. Um, I could actually, I do have some styling in here that I've put in here that turns the tables red. Uh, you know, I can remove that and then it it looks, well, that's that's just wrong. It needs to, <laughs> so so the point is that, that we walk through this together um, and I point out the various parts of how to how to write a table uh, and so forth. Yes, this would be tedious if you had to do it manually. There are ways to do this um, automatically, and you know, in the exercises we get into that, and that that would actually be a good challenge using the JavaScript skills to build this table automatically. So the purpose of this is to click on a row and run a script. So with me in the video, you would write the answer. I'm just going to click on it here. And uh, this, I walk through each piece of this to explain what am I doing here? Um, you know, and what, do, what does all this mean? So that when we run this, we can run a file, run a JavaScript function. But then we can easily just turn that into a um, FileMaker script. So I just update this code here. Um, I think it's, what's the script name? Uh, I'll just use send data, yeah. So I can easily update this to, um, I'll just put in high for a minute. So I can easily run this, and when I click on this, now a FileMaker script is run with the FileMaker dialog, and I can eventually grab the data out of this cell that they chose. In fact, it's actually right here, so I could actually put that in here and say, all right, now when I click on this, I want you to send the, the, the contents of that cell or the row back to FileMaker. So I'm skipping over it, going very fast at it now because but I wanted to show you this is the this is an example of what we do to to learn how to build this. I could see this, and I've actually built something very similar to this for clients. Just saying, hey, they just want a, a quick little list of the layouts in their system, so that they can click on it and actually go to that, or the a specific menu set, a, a specific uh, navigation uh, table that they could go to. So this is fairly close to real world in FileMaker, I think. Um, so that's the point of these exercises is to teach you a little bit about how in this case jQuery works, how to attach a click event to a row, and how to send it back, send the, the contents of that row or cell in this case back to FileMaker. So these are the exercises that I go through and, and we work, we work on it. Um, you know, there's there's quite a few of them here, and if you stick with me in this, then occasionally I'll update this with more exercises, maybe some challenges, some extra practices, so that people can um, you know get extra practice at this. I actually turned to this a lot when I was you know focusing on the uh, filtering an array for uh, various add-ons. I had to um, I, I focused on this exercise. This actually, this is interesting. I forgot that I had this. Let's see if this works. I don't know if it's going to. Yeah, okay. So I wrote some JavaScript here to take the data. This is a bad view of the data. I'm gonna put it in Visual Studio Code. Um, let's see here, data.json. Let's see if it formats. So this is a bunch of records of, of just various data points. And instead of actually manually creating that table, I was able to use my JavaScript skills to go through each of these, or these array elements, these objects, and render some of the information in here to a, 
a table. So that was a lot easier than the previous one I did where I hard coded the table. This one was generated through JavaScript. So again, I can see this being used, even if it's just a quick list view for someone to, to view. Um, and then of course you can even go further and add a click event to this and so forth. So that is the point of this, this exercise file. Um, all right, I have to clear that out so that the answer is not there. All right, so that is working um, with, with, with JavaScript in, in an exercise in sort of a training way. Um, this file here, not only does it have exercises, but it also has a bunch of concepts that, of JavaScript that we use in this file. So when, when I talk about uh, adding a click event to a row or to a heading inside of the JavaScript, I recommend that you know, we can read about what an event listener is and understand how to add an event listener, in this case, a click to a particular element on the page. Um, so again, this is very targeted for us given our time, given, given our uh, amount of brain power we have left and the, the, the regular work that we have to do throughout the day. This isn't everything in JavaScript. This is not a complete, it's just the stuff that we wanna use right now. And then finally, there's a bunch of resources here that we use. I mentioned Bootstrap earlier. This brings us up to Bootstrap, or it should, and it we can read more about how Bootstrap um, interacts with our the stuff that we render in the web viewer. So that is is that. And I know Louis here and other people who who know JavaScript really well. I'm sure they would be the first to say that's not a complete course. But hopefully they would say this, this is enough to get us going in JavaScript um, in, our, in our FileMaker work. Um, this, by the way, this, this uh, squares thing here is actually a JavaScript add-on that I built. I wrote all the code pretty much from scratch. I Googled the heck out of this, but it, I set this up to take all of the um, records in an exercises table that I have and display them in this form. Um, so that was the point of this is to take a found set from anywhere, any table in this particular file and render the data, render each record in, uh, in this method. Um, this may be impractical and you know way too colorful for, <laughs> for client use and so forth, but it is a good way to um, display data. Because I built this as an add-on that's similar to the, the in-product one soon, I can come in here and, and I can update information. Say, you know what, I, I don't want I want them to be 600 pixels long wide and you know 60 pixel pixels height in height. And so when I do that, I now get a different render of it. So uh, this was just my JavaScript skills to create this. Um, for, for my FileMaker file. I could have made five columns portals and tried to filter them and you know made it change and so forth, but I just chose for this event to do it this way. Yeah. When I downloaded the, the JS Learning Path, it came with the 15, um, <clears throat> 15 things to explore. Yep. How do you get all the 47 that you have? Uh, you wait for the imports, the next section of videos to come out. And then I, oh. I'm just, I'm releasing them one at a time because the videos and I, I yeah, that's, that's, the, that's just where we're at. So oh, okay. hopefully by, so, yeah. 15 really is all the reason, like at the point, at this point. That's right. But the rest of them are coming and, you know, I'll release them pretty quickly here. Um, just as people are finishing this up or, or, you know, maybe a little bit after, but yep. Eric, that's the good question. Thank you. So, all right. So I want to continue to demonstrate my awesome <laughs> FileMaker or JavaScript in FileMaker skills. I, I say awesome 
with a laugh because it's it's I'm trying to make the point that uh, you know a FileMaker developer can learn enough JavaScript to do some pretty interesting things. Uh, one of my <clears throat> example files is a um, that I did for DevCon or for Claris Engages is a uh, slider JavaScript library. And I walk through how this works, how we can change the options and add a, an event to send this the start and the end values back to FileMaker. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to go into that too much here because you can watch that video. But what I did and what I challenged myself to do was say, all right, you've got that. Let's use this library and let's use your JavaScript skills to create this to take a set of data, an array of elements, this happens to be an object with properties. And I, I want to see, can I use my JavaScript skills to render each of these questions into a separate slider? And can I have it look nice? Can I have it you know, be organized? So that was the challenge that I went through. This is nicely responsive, depending on how you know, big the web viewer is. But that's pretty cool. So I sat down and I did it. And I, um, if you're if you if you're interested, I can walk through that. It's a little nerve wracking, but I can certainly do that. Um, but I'm just using my JavaScript skills to write the basic function, the basic um, code that is needed to do this. So if I take out all but four questions, I just copied it so I can put them back in. And then I re-render it. Now I only have four questions. If I, you know, say question two should start at zero, I can go into the data and I can say question two, I want you to start at zero. There we go. So that's, uh, again, using the JavaScript skills that I've acquired over the last couple of years and that is represented in that exercise file. Um, I, you could build this, and this is going to be a chat. This is going to be one of the projects that uh, we do after a certain time period, after we have worked through a couple of the concepts and techniques in JavaScript. So, anybody here could build some build this with a little bit of study in some of the JavaScript. Um, should I? Well, I'll do it for a little bit and then we'll just we'll move on if, if we get bored here. But the the point, what I wanted to do in this case was actually just walk through how to build this. Um, the answer is right here. But I was 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 interested in, in uh, taking some time to just walk through some of this. I'll do a little bit and then, um, you know, if it gets boring, we'll move on. So. <clears throat> here's how I approach this. I said, all right, here's my data. It's in a, an, it's in an array of, of, in this case, objects. I collected this through file from FileMaker and I want to render an object, uh, a chart, a slider for each one of these. So here's how I did it. I started by creating a variable in JavaScript. And I just extracted the data uh, from that field. This is an actual field in FileMaker. And I have set up my um, web viewer to be a calculation that does some substitution for placeholder text for what's actually in that field. So in this case, I like this, I like this model where my FileMaker script stuffs some data into here, and then I'm using that calculation. So once I have it in this variable, I can use it in my entire uh, app and I can say, cons I can do this, I can just dem demonstrate it or just show it, make sure um, it's in here by doing this command here, console.table, which displays in the web viewer. Um, eh, I didn't do that, what did I do wrong? Console, da, da, da. here I'm gonna start with, console.log. See, this is the problem with always doing live code. Okay, there it is. All right, so here's now my object. So I know that my array. So now I know that the data is loaded. 
And now I can do anything I want with this. The, the purpose of this was to go through each one of these and create an object, create a slider for each one of those. So, you know, there's a there's a function in, in JavaScript that allows me to do something to, for each one of these elements in the array. So there's nine elements in that array. I want to do something with each one of them. So we can take a JavaScript uh, function called for each. And we can run a function on that. And this is going to say for each of the elements, do something. And you know, the basic the basic thing we might do is um you know, just something silly like this. Uh, let's see here. Yep, 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 yep. Right in the midst of things, I da, 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 yeah, that's right. Da, 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 da. Where did it go? All right, there it is. So data dot for each. Louis screaming at me right now. So let's run that and see if there's a. Oh, there it is. Okay, so there's. So that's the first element, that's the second element, third element, fourth element, fifth element, sixth element, seventh element, eighth element, ninth element. So now I know that for each of the elements in this variable, I can do something. And from there, I would just build uh, my, my JavaScript function inside of here to uh, get rid of that, to actually um, take each element out, extract parts of it, extract some of the properties. So I could do that right here. I could say um, var name equals e dot name. I'm, again, I'm skipping over a lot at the moment, but um, there we go. So something like this, if I did this, I am using that code. And what it's doing is it's extracting out from the the array, the name value, and it's just displaying them in the console here. So again, I'm just using JavaScript. I'm not using any magic or anything. I'm just using my basic JavaScript to extract each one of those and to do something with it. And to make a long coding session short, live coding session, this is, this is what I'm doing here. Here's that for each. And it's just running through each element in that array and it's creating a slider for each one of those in the uh, in the web viewer in the DOM. That's how I saw a question. Oh, I saw you see a lot of questions. Okay, let's see what are the questions. Close of the flow. Things better. Da, 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 da. DOM. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll show that to uh, Taylor. Thank you, Louie. Okay. So yeah. So <laughs> I'm I'm moving up kind of fast because we don't have hours to spend on on each of the exercises. I do have a video about enabling this inspector and Beeswax is the, the people that have written about this. Um, it is Mac OS only at the moment, although I think Christian Schmidt uh, with MBS has figured out a way to allow this to show up in, in Windows. But it's basically the place that I go to see if my code is wrong. I use it all the time. If I create an error in here, like I get rid of this stuff here accidentally, I'm just copying it. Then I'm going to get an error and the out the uh, inspector should tell me, actually I may have just deleted stuff that doesn't really matter. Oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> All right, I'll delete that, there we go. So now if I, if I view that, uh, I'm still not getting errors. How come the only time I want to have an error, I'm not getting it, so. This does show me all of the errors that I create in um, in my web viewer, in my JavaScript code, and it helps me to figure out what I should do differently. I'm surprised that didn't, no, it wasn't a problem. It should be. Because I'm, you know, I've declared those variables, or I'm using those variables, but I'm not, I haven't declared them. So let's try that again. I'm gonna go back into layout mode. Ah, there we go, there's an error. Oh, that's why. Can't find the variable start, so it's 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 telling me, oh, I'm using the variable start somewhere in my JavaScript, but I didn't declare it, so I, I made a mistake. 
So I need to fix that and then rerun it. Um, networking calls and inspecting DOM elements. Sure, that's right. Um, I, I honestly, Louis, I don't know if I've ever considered networking when it comes to building something in a in a FileMaker app. Um, but maybe I'm missing something already with that. But it's uh, inspecting DOM elements for sure. Yeah, I can see all of the sliders that I. Uh, where is it? Well. So we go into, I go into depth on this. I use it a lot in the exercises and I'm sure other like people like West Boss also teach how to use this a lot. So that's what that's about. So again, using my JavaScript skills, combining that with a library that I found online to help me to uh, create a nice interface for clients so that they can answer a survey in a kind of modern or expected, I guess is a better word, way. All right, um, what time, it's 9.30. When should I stop, Eric? Here's a... Uh, um, well, it's late till 7.30, but you know, a lot of people enter about seven, Q&A. Okay. All right, yeah, I'll, I'll go for a few more minutes. I'll go for like eight more minutes and then stop. This is a um, JavaScript library that I used for a client to build a dashboard that displays, in this case, a thousand records. The data is right here. It's an array of a thousand elements, objects that came from data from a, a, ta a FileMaker table. And I'm using a JavaScript library and my JavaScript skills to render this table here. Uh, it looks a little funky here because it, it, it's not always refreshing. Um, so, so this is another example of something that I, I would turn to JavaScript for. In fact, I had to, because he wanted an entire dashboard and, you know, this library here, it's called, uh, dc.js and it, and it uses a, a couple supplementary libraries, but it takes the all thousand records and I can tell it in this box, I want you to pick out. Um, in this case, I guess it's just counting all of them. But over here, I want you to find all of the records with AP as a user. Um, you can see that one of the keys in here is uh, employee. And I can say, I want you to count all these and summarize them for, for all 1,000 of these records. I want you to do it for 1,000 records, and in my client's case, I want you to do it for 25,000 records. And this does it without, without you know, any, any complications. So this would be really tough to do each one of these in, in uh, you know, FileMaker, and it's, you know, it's allowing for some nice interactivity. I can click on this person here, this client FA, and I can render all of their, or filter all of the other charts to represent their data. Um, so we can see how many categories, how many of each category this one person has sold, or these two people, or you know these three people have sold. So this is another example of a nice JavaScript library and using my JavaScript skills to render this out and, and make it work for each one of these sections in here. A lot of people, some good, some good questions. We'll, we'll, I'll take a look at those questions in a moment. Um, I talked to you a little bit about the Kanban. Um, um, here is, here's my, an old product that we used to sell that takes tasks from a table and um, actually through a complicated relationship and it renders it this way. And um, the way that this data comes in is I start on this, I go to this context and I read through the, the, uh, the, the relationships that are sorted certain ways and it's pretty complex. For anybody that is you know, trying to set up this Kanban board, our product, it took some complex uh, structuring to get this to work. But I 
over the course of the couple of years, I had to use my FileMaker skills to actually um, uh, to uh, to create a way for you to anyone to just say which table this data comes from here. Here's where the here's the layout from which the the data comes, and I had to use my JavaScript to skills to take that found set, whether it was sorted or not, I wasn't relying on the, use, the, the, the developer to sort it a certain way. And I would have to use JavaScript to take each of the records and stuff them into the right lanes that this, uh, this um, library needed. This, this library actually needed a complex, see if I have it here, I'm not sure if I do, actually I forgot to look. This, yeah, so this library um, needed a complex, complex uh, structure. This is pretty, it's pretty complex and to, to write this, I've tried to write this in a script and it just, it, it was really slow, depending, especially depending on the number of records. So I had to use my JavaScript skills to make this work. Take any found set of data from, from any user and sort it, uh, structure it cor correctly. Um, let's see what else we got. I'll show one more, we'll do one more. Um, uh, da, 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 da. The date picker is, is an interesting one where we can use a JavaScript library to allow users to um, select dates and send that back to FileMaker. This library, like every library that I work with, has a ton of options that we can get in here and we can update them so that it it functions differently than what we needed, what we wanted it to. Then, <clears throat> so it functions differently. I guess that's the only thing. Like I could say. Just show me a, a single date picker instead of the default, which is a, a, a double date picker. So we've got that here. So that's the power of using JavaScript libraries. And it's the power of knowing a little bit of JavaScript to be dangerous, to be effective, to see some success and to solve um, some customer problems, customer use cases with a JavaScript library. All right, so I'm gonna take a look at some questions, see what people have been talking about. Please feel free to speak up and ask other questions as well. Uh, let's see here. Ward is asking, how do you make the data table in JSON format? Is it a combination of calculated fields and a list function? Good question. Um, because because I'm in FileMaker 19, I'm now using the uh, execute FileMaker data API script step to do my found set. That's the only way that I particularly will return a found set anymore because I don't have to set up any calculated fields to do it like I've done before. I don't have any, I don't have to set up any calculated fields to create a JSON object for that one record and then another list of summary field that does the summary function and it creates a list of all those JSON objects. And then I have to do some substitution because it's, it's just a list, it's not an array. That all goes away because now I can use that new FileMaker execute data API script step. And, uh, oh, let me just show you, I'll just show you a great example of that. I have one, um, uh, it's this, Fancy Grid, this is a commercial um, list view library that renders data. Um, there's the data. It renders it in a nice looking different uh, uh, grid. This particular grid, you can actually, if you set up an option, you can actually edit the data in here and you know change it on the fly. But this is the data that I get back. I'm using the execute. FileMaker data API script step to get back the data. And then I'm using my JavaScript skills to parse out the pieces that I need for the library. Okay. Um, 
What's my favorite upcoming non -add, non add on feature in FileMaker? Louis, you want me to answer that? <laughs> I can answer that. Um, non add on. I don't know. I have to think about that for a minute. Oh, let's see. I missed. I missed some. If you have time, um, Kent is saying this for interactive web viewer incorporating data over a number of FileMaker records. How do you handle conflicts record locking if someone manipulates the data in the web viewer that is trying to write back to the fields? Good question. Yeah, okay. So that's a great question. And that's where our, our FileMaker skills come up. If I click on this row, I'm just showing a dialogue here of the data, but I may want to actually go find this record because I have the primary key and I may have to update it. To me, this is exactly like what you would do if someone tried to edit a, a, this record in a particular layout. I would always turn on er, uh, error capture and I would check to see if I can actually update this, this, this record um, in the cases where the JavaScript has updated it, like that sliders, for example. This isn't a good example because I don't have it update, uh, editable. With the slider, I'm sliding the, the slide and it stops at a certain point. I wanna send that new number back to the, the, the particular record. And if someone's editing that, I have a, a problem and I have to handle that. So I would just use my normal FileMaker skills and handle it the way I would. I would, again, check for error trapping or check for the error. And if there's an error, then you know either loops, do a quick loop of 10 times to see if I can edit the record or dump out and say, I'm sorry, we can't edit this. And then we have to figure out how to get the number back to the library, uh, to the web viewer correctly. So there is, that's a good question. There is an additional step with dealing with data from here. Um, so good question. Oh, you thought the answer would be the execute data API script step. <laughs> Interesting. Kent, did that answer your question? It was a quick answer, but I hope that got you on the, you know, thinking it. Um, let's see. All right, so I looked at that word, que word question. In the layout where you're composing the HTML and JavaScript, you, could you show in layout mode so I can see if the object on the right is a text field or a web viewer? Yeah. Oh, okay, so the uh, my, my file, my uh, exercise file, is that right? Um, yeah, uh, no, yeah, so when we go here, yeah, this is two actually two web viewers side by side. This is an add-on called Ace Editor that I built um, that I can, uh, can use anywhere. And, um, you know, there's a lot of information about these add-ons that when, when these are in product, when the ones coming to the product are in the product, there'll be information about what this all is happening here. But basically, yes, I'm writing code in this editor, in this web viewer editor. And every once in a while, it's like every couple seconds, it saves it to the actual field that this is connected to. Okay. Uh, what other thoughts do you have about this? Um, I hope that I'm I'm getting across this idea that you know a, any FileMaker developer can spend a little bit of time learning this and pick up some good stuff. Uh, my colleague Beverly uh, uh, Barbara Cooney is here, and she has been learning JavaScript um, on her own using West Boss. And she's able to uh, understand what I'm doing in these. I don't, I'm not sure, Barbara, have you used JavaScript in the real world in your client's work yet? But um, I know she's able to solve challenges that I throw her way in this, in this file. So we really can all spend some time and learn that. I have, Jeremy. I, I wouldn't be able to show my face at our daily meetings if I haven't used something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Done, I've done pivot table. Oh, oh that's right. Yeah. Probably going to do data tables. And Ward was asking, you know, what did, I think it was Ward, what are the things you do in JavaScript you can't do with FileMaker? I have a, a need right now, a use case to do a list view where each of the row heights 
varies. You can't really do that in FileMaker. It's not in preview mode, it's in browse mode. So uh, I'll probably be heading that direction. The thing I like about this journey is that when I came out from West Boss, I was very um, hypothetical. It was like, how do I, how do I apply this? And I think what you're producing here is going to help me apply this knowledge directly to FileMaker. So I'll be definitely one of the people following, uh, and and because I learn by doing, not necessarily by watching videos. So this is going to be very helpful for me. Did I do not pay to say that. How they can get a hold of you, Jeremy? <laughs> yeah. Yep. I will. Yep. So. What other thoughts do we have about about this? Um, I don't I, you know. I don't know what do you all think about this this idea that we just. Oh, Taylor is one here. I, I I've been meaning to bring this up. Taylor has been exploring um, JavaScript. I don't know how much you've done, Taylor. Um, you know, just learning JavaScript and stuff. But you worked on the full calendar. Uh, uh, a calendar integration um, as an add-on, I think, or just a, a an integration, and you've shown that in the community. Taylor, have you done any like specific targeted JavaScript learning, or are you working with those libraries primarily? I'm just bumbling my way through libraries. Don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm willing to have fun and experiment and kind of learn a little bit that way. Nice. <laughs> Okay. What other thoughts? Thank you, Taylor. That's that's good. It's like I said. There's <laughs> starting to be a lot of questions in the FileMaker community, in the Claris community forums about JavaScript. So it's it's heartening to see that um, people are exploring it and learning how to add click events to a row of a table and so forth. So um, that's good. Uh, yes, this this this. File is available to download. It's on our site. Um, you can actually, you know, contact me through that. Contact me through that learning path. I've got the JS learning path here. Um, <clears throat> I'll chat. I'll s actually, Barbara, could you, would you mind grabbing this link and, and chatting it to everybody for me? Appreciate it. Thank you. You can download it here and grab a copy of it and then start to walk through the videos. You can, uh, here's Beeswax's post that talks about how to um, create, uh, enable the inspector. Uh, if you need help, Louis will come around to your table and he will um, enable it for you. He's, he's, he's done that. He did that for uh, the last training session. Um, yeah, so there's just various events here. You can contact me through this or Jeremy at guysinteractive.com. Um, the file itself has a contact us as well, so you can get a hold of me there. Um, yeah, thank you, Barbara. So she she um, actually and this one too. That uh, Barbara just linked to the post. Here's the place where the actual file is. Oh yeah, I'm in Slack too. If you uh, need that. Uh, if you're in Slack, um, I'm I'm in there. Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> Beverly. Duh, you said Slack. Yes, there is a, a Slack channel that you can join, and I actually think do I have it in that? I'm not sure if I have it in that post. There is a JavaScript Slack channel. Um, oh, I don't have it in here. I will put it in here, but I can. If you're interested, let, send me an email, and I'll I'll send you the link for it. Um, you can also follow my Twitter account on this. Um, I, I will post specific things about about this learning JS in FM on this Twitter account. Yep, I'm everywhere. Oh, there it is, fm-js.slack.com, that you can join me there. Uh, all right. I really hope that, um, you know, you'll you'll at least take a look at, at some JavaScript and and get into it a little bit. Um, it's meant to be a bit of beginner language, but it's become pretty complex. Um, but we don't need to know all the complexities of it. I mean, Louie probably is swearing at me right now for saying that, but I'm telling you, you can do a lot with a little bit of knowledge about JavaScript and HTML. Hey, Jeremy, can you uh, um, elaborate how you 
um, let's say you want to do something, uh, visualization, or uh, maybe it's a, a interactive table of some sort. Mm -hmm. How do you go about finding the uh, JavaScript library that has potential? Good question. <laughs> Great question. Um, number one, my uh, the the engage session that I did. Um, it, Steve, do you have the link for that? Could you help me find that link quick? I only went over like eleven different libraries that would be useful um, on my on guysinteractive.com site. If you type in JavaScript in our search engine, you will see a lot of other libraries that I have looked at and uh, have written up about. But basically, the way that I find a library that works is I. Oh wait, I don't want to say my name. I just search the internet and I look for libraries that, as they are on GitHub, are heavily starred, heavily used, and updated often. If they have a hundred bugs, I'm not so concerned about that because the developers are actively working on that library and fixing it and and getting the the bugs fixed up. So and are you? Yeah. Are you are you pulling the library directly from the web or are you uh, copying it and putting it in a uh, layout or something? In this case, uh, for this example, I copied the, the code and I brought it into here. But in other cases, I'm not very consistent because I'm not very consistent. The reason to put it in here is to be offline, but I can't remember the last time any of my computers were offline. So I just would rather link to the library through their CDN, um, like I've done here. Like here, I'm actually linking to a couple fonts that I wanted to use, mm -hmm. which makes this look a little bit different. I don't know what's wrong with that. Um, so most of the time, I'm I'm starting to link to them because it actually then it removes another field that I have to build into my into my um, yeah. FileMaker tables. Yeah. Yeah, and my concern is just that well, if they change something in the code, will it break your code? Then you know. Good question. Um, most likely no, because other people are not just me, but other people are using an older version. And you know, if if uh, the, the, but that's a good point. Um, I actually made the case. The the I'll take back what I said. If you find a version that works for you and you start using it, just put it into a field and just run with that. Even if the library itself matures three or four more versions. If that version of the library is working for you, use it and continue to use it forever and ever. Right. So there's then once you have Builder, there's really nothing that stops you from uh, putting it on a website, you know, just an uh, Apache server, than uh, putting it in the solution itself, really, right? Right. Um, uh, I think so. <laughs> yes, I would. <sighs> Louis may may want to speak up to this even more. I my head is not clear at the moment, but FileMaker has a problem with well, J JavaScript in general has a problem with loading it from different places. I don't know. I'm not clear at that right now. My brain is 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 mess is messy. But yeah, it, it has to do with CORS cores. So we can look that up, and I can explain that more better. But I typically will just either like I said load. Uh, link to it directly from its delivery network or download it itself and um, stuff it into a field. Right. Uh, what I'm saying is if you uh, develop in a, a form, let's say here, uh, that you originally plan to use in your web browser, yep. uh, if you then say, for well, I want it outward facing and, uh, you know, do a survey for clients and send them a link or something, uh, there's nothing against putting it on the uh, on a web server then, right? No, it, and get the data back in. Yeah. With FileMaker 19, you can deploy this to WebDirect, and it'll work just fine most of the time. Right, Web but you can even go around WebDirect and using the uh, uh, API interface. I believe so. Yeah, I'm. Um, I have to explore that a little bit more. I, mean, I haven't done any like taking it in here, from here to go to a public facing. I would just. Build a separate web page for that, or um, but yeah, use this same library that you're using in here on your right. web page. What? And, 
Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna answer here. If you're using a JavaScript library or JavaScript that someone else created and it has the license, if you include the license, typically you can use it anywhere, but you have to include the license. So it's a legal limitation. Well, yeah. But yeah. if it's free and they say it's free if you use this license, then it's free to use if you use the license. Right. Yeah, it was more <laughs> my question is more from a technical point of view. Yeah, Ward, from a from a technical standpoint, I think uh Taylor Sharp mentioned it in the, the chat. Um you'd have to test out cores, specifically if you're talking about uh connecting to the data API or um the, the XML, um, the older XML web publishing, um, just experiment with cores if you're putting on an external server. Oops. Oops. Copy. Here's my Slack uh, channel on the FMJS stuff, so you can join that. I'll, anybody who clicks on that can, can join me and talk through it all. Um, that, that Slack channel is kind of, it goes dormant for a while, then it revs back up again. I'll try to remember to keep it um, more active. All right. I, I would love for people who are exploring this to stay in communication with me and just see how things are going. I would love to see what you're learning and um, what you've discovered that I may have missed. I mean, there's a ton, there's still, there's still a lot to learn and uh, I think this path is a good start and we can keep on going together. And I, <laughs> just like the FileMaker community supports each other in virtual lists or uh, Execute SQL, I mean, Execute SQL is supported by hundreds of members. Eventually, we're going to get to the point where we're supporting each other in this JavaScript stuff. And I am excited about that because there's there are people who know a lot of JavaScript who are coming to our platform and I'm, I'm really happy about that and they can really contribute very well, very much so. All right. Thank you, Taylor. Thank you, Drew. Uh, thanks, Louie. Yeah, join me for this and uh, let me know if there are bugs in the file. This is just a FileMaker file, it's open. And you can look at all my messiness. <laughs> Vince ran this through Inspector Pro and found a lot of errors in it, a lot of misplaced bug uh, buttons and stuff. I love that, but you know, so, some of this stuff was just built for me to 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 like. This is my like work zone that I just still have in the file, so I'm not gonna worry about That's taking that. Cool file. I almost wish it was repurposed for training in all kinds of things. Yeah. Well. You know, eventually, I, well, I mean, it speaks to this speaks directly to the JavaScript stuff, the web viewer stuff, right? I, I don't, you know, if, if, uh, you know, Beverly wanted to do some work on the execute SQL, she could, but, you know, she probably doesn't need to go to this elaborate craziness. I don't know. She could take my add on here and, and, and pull from the records in the, in the examples table that she has, but. So I guess that's your job now, Beverly, is to <laughs> create an uh, execute SQL practice file. <laughs> uh, well, thanks guys for, for letting me join um, and talk more about this stuff. I don't, I, I am not a full expert on every single possible calculation and how to do everything in FileMaker. But I, I'm, I'm really focused on, on this JavaScript stuff, so I'd be able to share it. Um, Thank you, Jeremy. This is awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Whew.